Hey, um, I just wanted to leave you a quick voice message and say that I'll be 10 minutes late, but I will be with you soon. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you. Bye bye. just wanted to leave you a quick voice message and say that I'll be 10 minutes late, but I will be with you. Man, why does my voice on sound recordings always sound so weird and different? There must be an explanation for this, right? Anyone who hears their own voice for the first time in a video or in an audio recording is usually horrified. Is this how your own voice is supposed to sound? In this video, I will explain why we hear ourselves differently from people around us and why we often don't like the sound at all. When the nursery rhyme, Mary had a little lamb, sounded from Thomas Alva Addison's phonograph in 1877, it was a sensation. He sang the first verses of the song himself and they sound, well, have a listen yourself. A uh, little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, its feet were quite as slow and everywhere that Mary went the lamb was sure to go. I mean, this is nothing compared to the audio experience we have today, no? But back then, this was a miracle. Thomas Alva Edison was the first person ever to be able to record and reproduce the human voice directly and in this way listen to the sound recording of his own voice. But the inventor was still not really happy with this recording. The sound of his voice seemed somehow alien to Edison. But why does one's own voice often sound quite different from what we are used to? It's not because of the quality of the recording equipment. Because even if the recording of one's own voice may sound strange, it is actually exactly the voice that the people around you hear. The reason for the difference in perception is that when we speak, we do not hear our own voice exclusively through the external ear channel, like the people around us, but also through the inner and middle ear. When we make sounds, sound waves travel through the bones of the skull to the inner ear. The sound travels from the larynx through the skull bones to the eardrum. This process usually makes your own voice sound deeper than it actually is. If, on the other hand, we only hear our own voice in a recording, the effect I just described does not occur. Microphones, for example, only pick up the airborne sound from our mouth, but not the bone sound. And the vibrations that occur in our own body while speaking do not take place. Instead, we hear our own voice exclusively through the external ear canal. Suddenly, our own voice sounds strangely alien. Because the sound is initially very unfamiliar, many people do not like the sound of their own voice. But there is good news. Accepting your own voice can be trained. The more often you listen to your own voice in recordings, the more you get used to it and the more you like it. Hey, um, I just wanted to leave you a quick voice message and say that I'll be 10 minutes late, but I it's actually not that bad. When Thomas Alva Edison heard his own voice on tape in 1877 and wondered about its strange sound, he did not know this explanation. Instead, he suspected that the flaw in the technology of his phonograph was changing the sounds. 